Hi guys from Canada. You see all these videos on YouTube, how to mix in Logic, how to mix in Cubase, how to mix in Pro Tools, how to mix in Ableton Live, how to mix in Fruity Loops. And actually it's complete nonsense because you mix in any DW like in any other DW. It just looks like each software is just unique, but in fact it's all the same. It's just a platform, nothing special in the EWs, it's just a platform. And remember, the king of situation is approaches, and I teach approaches like nobody else. Today I'm gonna show you absolutely amazing video, so you're gonna understand absolutely each DW and how to use it effectively. By the way, guys, you have the opportunity to attend one class for free of one of the best audio production courses and the most mind-blowing courses. You will be connected to one of the next oncoming classes with my students who are taking this course right now so you can see exactly how we study and then you can decide if you want to enroll. Imagine this course like a gem which you didn't expect to find. Instead of feeling yourself like a little guy among all these big software manufacturers, you will be completely different level of audio engineer actually who's supposed to be higher than all these software manufacturers. These software manufacturers commonly bullshit you creating their own theory to force you to buy their software. So year by year you don't progress, you remain exactly at the same level and you go like what is the best compressor in 2024? My course is designed to give you the opportunity not to be like this. I teach you real critical thinking approach, only very effective methods in all subjects of audio production. And we actually have almost all audio production subjects on my course. Most important, you will know what exactly the best thing for your own mix instead of just copying somebody else. And we even have unique horror checking sessions when I open your own projects in front of you in real time, showing your mistakes, explaining every your setting and showing what's wrong with those. Use this video as an example how I explained, but don't forget I have a policy of putting only 10% of the power of my course to my videos. Of course, I keep 90% of the power of my course for my students. After you check this video, don't forget to try one class for free to decide for yourself. Nine months, real-time classes, convenient monthly payments. You can find the information about me, my course, and 260 reviews in the description and in the first pin comment. But the point is, I don't convince you by words. I convince you by showing you the real class so you can see exactly what we study and you can decide by yourself. So ask me about the course details with email I provided and get one class for free to decide. You can find information how to contact me on the screen or in the first pin comment. So no matter what you use, Apple computer with logic, Pro Tools or Cubase or FL Studio or Ableton Live or Free Reaper or Studio One. To really understand how each DAW works, you need to understand how it was done in 1970s, 1980s, 2000s. So remember, you had two pieces, tape machine and mixing console. On the tape, you have multiple tracks. Track one, which is, let's say, kick drum. You have track two, which is, let's say, bass. You have track three, which is snare drum. You have track 4, which is guitar, and so on, right? You have snare, drum, waveform, you have guitar track, and so on. You have multiple channels. So when this tape go to the machine head, look at the screen, you can see like this tape machine just really going through this machine head like this. That's why kick, bass, snare, drum, and guitar sound in synchronization. So your music sounds like on time. Each track of a tape machine goes to individual channels of a mixer, which is, for example, classic mixer SSL 4000E in most top studios since 1980s throughout 2005, you know. It was like absolutely mainstream console, and as you know, it was golden era of uh, making records and selling music. How it was actually working, kick drum was going to its individual kick channel. Kick channel is basically a water pipe and water going through this water pipe. Inside of this channel there is multiple elements, but essentially it's some equalizer, which obviously, as you know, makes sound brighter, darker and so on. Again, it's a video for beginners, right? So I kind of 
will simplify as much as I can. But actually, everything I say will be very on point. Potentially, it has some dynamic processors. The device is called compressors and gates. Compressor make your nodes more even in volume. Instead of like, oh, 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 everything sounds more like, da, 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 da. so you can really decide how loud it should be. Second thing, it's gate. Gate controls noise in between nodes. Those like silent, most quiet parts, which commonly make those like Psh, kind of noise. You know what I mean? So you can filter this noise out. So it was Dynamics module. Every channel of SSL mixer had insert which allowed you to send signal somewhere outside it's stuff like this on the screen right it's 1176 for example or a la 2 a compressors i have all those things actually over there in my studio we use an insert to send signals outside of the mixing console so we can say insert, some interesting thing called send, and then we basically have a fader, this large uh, thing which you can see over here on the screen like this, right? It's a, it's a fader to control volumes. One water pipe and signal goes through the top to bottom of this channel. Signal was going from the tape machine tracks to the mixer's channels, then to main master channel, uh, which assembles all other tracks together. So basically, sound from here goes to super master pipe, you know what I mean? Like big pipe, which we call master channel or master bus. And this is where the whole song sounds together. All these computer programs exactly based on the same principle. Let me show you. Just so you know, among all DAWs, there are like major DAWs. Other level is just like popular DAWs, and then like more like unknown DAWs. The most legendary mixing console of all time, which looks like this. These companies still exist, and they make different consoles and digital controllers, which is actually not necessarily you really need for your studio. Uh, it's more like only if you have like spare money, so I completely don't recommend to invest in these least important pieces of your studio, but you can see those on my table over here. This controller and actually something what you don't see on the left side, and I have analog SSLs over here. This company is not affiliated to any DW, so they can tell you some sort of a, like honest list of the most popular DWs. First place is Pro Tools. Studio standard, because people didn't want to mess with different computer programs, they wanted just one computer program which you can bring from studio to studio and all your songs will be like in one program, you know. So Pro Tools became studio standard. However, since 2010, it lost its... Uh, kind of a like superiority status and Pro Tools right now, like any other DW, even though it's number one on this list, it's uh, roughly like top three DWs. Second DW is Logic Pro. This is my Apple laptop and as you can see, this is Logic Pro. Uh, Apple computers just took this DW as their main music production program and that's why it's so pushed by this platform of computers and obviously that's why it has very huge popularity. It's number two on this list. Third DW is Cubase slash Nuendo. Cubase and Nuendo is kind of the same thing. This is Cubase and actually I'm mostly user of Cubase. I was I started in 2000 on Cubase and I still use this DW as my main DW but I'm completely fine with any other DW. I was a user of Pro Tools, I'm a user of Logic Pro right now and stuff like this. Cubase, it's very important, DW, which was one of the most groundbreaking DW. It contributed to audio production world so, with so many things, including MIDI, uh, automatic delay compensation, 32-bit with floating point, and so many other things. Of course, we have plenty of very popular DWs. Ableton Live, very popular among electronic musicians. Studio One, which I already said, some engineers of Cubase quit Steinberg company and they established their own DW called Studio One. Reaper as one of the free DWs, which is actually as powerful as all other DWs, so it's over here, actually quite low on this list. 
And actually, one DW which is not mentioned on this list is Fruity Loops or FL Studio. So those probably the most known DAWs nowadays. As I said, all DAWs are exactly the same. How to understand absolutely every DAW without trying to learn each DAW separately, like a lot of people try to do it. As you can see, I'm in Cubase. I press this plus or I press right mouse click and I choose command called add audio track like this. You can either drag and drop some audio files from your computer to this or you can hit record button and you can record something with this channel. This is my logic. I recorded my voice on this audio channel. You also press plus, you create, you choose audio channel and you can record it. Remember this uh, tape machine head, which goes through the tape like this in, in synchronization way in DWs. It's exactly the same, but you have some sort of like time cursor, which in Cubase which goes in Cubase from the left to right like this. In Logic is this vertical white line, which goes through all channels and through all waveforms. Now you can hear some percussion. And it plays on this audio track. What you can do even before you go to the mixer, you can actually edit this waveform and exactly the same thing you can do over here in Logic on the main workspace. I mean, you can cut this waveform, you can delete some pieces, you can make fade out, fade in for smooth transition from silence to the sound, like this. But most importantly, you can adjust actually overall volume of this audio clip or audio region or audio event it's called in different ways in different DWs. you can make it quieter you can make it louder like this it has nothing to do with the mixer with volume faders with plugins it all happens even before you reach any audio processing pieces any pieces of the mixer or volume adjustments then this track which is called audio 01 goes to the mixer and mixer you open over here on the left side on the top left you open this mixer on the full screen and now you can see this audio 01 channel which looks like vertical pipe but this piece has nothing to do with the previous track a lot of people think it's kind of the same like horizontal representation versus vertical representation it's not it's completely different things it's the second piece of the software it stores vertical water pipes in logic dw i press this button which also looks like a mixer you can see over here 70 percent of the screen occupied right now by the mixer and also look over here, we have this vertical water pipe going from here to this large fader in the end, right? So it's another water pipe. Looks exactly the same like in Cubase. It looks, in, it looks like that in any DW. Some people claim that they don't understand Cubase because it looks like too complicated and has a lot of different functions and windows and menus. And it's definitely true. You can simplify Cubase like I always do it because I never rely just on DW. I rely on just concepts, on principles. So I don't need all these extra gigantic number of features. So over here in the Rex menu, you can activate all this EQ, channel strip, direct routing, tracks, device panels. And as you can see, then you can open these, then you can open these, then you can open then you can open eq then you can open some channel strip right and with some processors gate compressor eq it looks so crazy and a lot of people are like oh my god what's going on you know what i mean and actually i completely suggest not to do it in this way for two reasons clear strategy of what you're gonna do secondly be in the same classic ballpark like people used in 1970s and 2005 potentially routing so you at least know where signal goes from and where it goes farther secondly you may activate pre-module in source sense and that's it nothing else so basically routing pre insert and send and if you want to simplify even more forget about routing and pre exactly the same over here on the top of 
analog mixer, it's a volume adjustments on the input. You can make sound a bit louder, a bit quieter. For this, you go to the pre-module and you rotate this gain to make it quieter or slider to the right to make it a bit louder. You potentially also need phase reverse in Logic DW. You have this little zero over here. Zero means you didn't adjust anything. You didn't make it quieter, you didn't make it louder. If you make a bit more, it will be louder. If you make a bit less, it will be a bit quieter on the input of this water pipe. More water pressure or less water pressure. It's exactly the same thing. Then, instead of all this nonsense with some built-in equalizers, channel strips and some processors, you don't have any processors in DW's mixers. You have insert slots, holes over here to connect, for example, different processors. By the way, I'm gonna mention all these type of processors a bit later today. So equalizers, you can make something brighter, you can make something clearer like this, you can got some boominess of the low end or something like this. You can put some compressors over here, right? And different other processors. Imagine just some audio effects which changes the way how your instrument sound. If you ask me, but how about those equalizers, channel strips, some compressors, which already built in in DWs? Actually, it's bullshit. Nothing is built in in DWs. For example, in Cubase, if you go to EQ, equalizer section, you have some equalizer, but it only looks like it's built in in DW. In fact, it's just simple plugin made by the same software company, which is actually separate equalizer plugin, equalizer software, which is for convenience built in in the mixer. You can actually have access to this equalizer without using EQ. You can go here, you can go to default, you can go to the name of the company Steinberg, you can go to EQ, you can choose name called Studio EQ, and it will be exactly the same equalizer. So in fact, it's not really built-in equalizer, it's just a simpler way how to have access to the same plugin, which is equalizer, just in the mixer. But quality of built-in plugins not always something what you want, not it's the best quality, but still pretty good actually. If tomorrow you switch DW, you're not gonna have access to these built-in processors of some DW. That's why we should use DW as a platform and then you can use any favorite tools made by some third-party plug-in manufacturers. It would be easier way to do it. But it's up to you, you can use actually built-in processors. Instead of activating some built-in EQ, I recommend not to use built-in EQ and just use in-source to put any plugins you want. I literally have hundreds of different plugins. The same goes in Logic. For example, if you look over here, you can see some name called EQ. But it's not really EQ. In fact, there is something below it called audio effects. It's like effect for audio processing. Logic manufacturer created their own equalizer, not over here, but above it. But in fact, it's still the same plugin which you can put below it. You know what I mean? Look at this picture. This is exactly equalizer I'm talking about. Look at the mixer. It says EQ and it looks like this. As you can see, I boosted upper mid range like this for clarity. You do it if you want your instrument to sound clearer. Below it, you can actually see this audio effects slot, which, which says channel EQ. So in fact, I didn't use anything like built-in equalizer. Actually, in fact, I just put some separate software called channel EQ made by Apple Logic Pro manufacturer, which just have one extra little feature to be represented on the top of the mixer. But in fact, it's just as any other equalizer. So in Logic DW, I specifically chose other equalizer called Pro Q3 by other plugin manufacturer. And as you can see, it still says Audio FX Pro Q3 equalizer, and I did pretty the same frequency boost. That's it. So in the Q slot, it doesn't say anything on the top because in this way, basically Logic Pro DW promotes their own equalizer. Instead, I use this equalizer, which can be, let's say, more superior equalizer in quality or at least at the same levels but let's say for some reason i prefer to use this one so my recommendation don't stick with, with something what they just give you you know make your own decision what works for you so audio effects it slots for those audio processors and in cubase as you can see they are called inserts and you can put any plugin you want in these little slots then you have 
so-called sand. What sand really means, you take the same water which going from the top to bottom through this water pipe. When it reaches sand element of your signal, you just literally take little piece of the same water and throws it outside. Making literally like a copy, you know? It's almost like two water pipes connected to each other and water goes not only from top to bottom but actually from the left to right you use so-called ox buses what ox buses literally means it's just some water pipe which is hanging in the air waiting for who knows what right it's just another water pipe just hanging in the air it goes from sand to this input of this new green water pipe Water of the same kind, let's say it's your, uh, this like percussion, right? This, this, this like, which sounds like this. So exactly the same sound will go to this green special channel. And it will be just working over here and you can apply anything you want over here. Usually people use these green pipes for ambient effects called reverb or reverberation plugins which imitate some realistic large spaces like concert halls music recording studios cathedrals churches stadiums grand canyon and stuff like this for this you need to put any reverb plugin on the aux bus and you need to apply 100 percent wet parameter don't even ask what it means, just 100% wet. So let me show you. So if I want these drums to be ambient, I click right mouse click over here. I choose command, add effects channel to select the channels. In Cubase, aux buses are called effects channels. In all other DWs, they're called aux buses. So it's basically the same thing. I press it. I choose stereo because ambience is stereo between left and right speaker, right? You add track, you put some plugin which sounds ambient, for example, for example, I choose this classic lexicon emulation. So blend is 100% wet, as you can see it says wet over here, which means signal itself, the sound itself sounds like this. Its ambience imitation sounds like this. So very roomy, right? And when you blend these two things together, you get original sound with a bit of ambient feel. This is what we mean by aux buses. Now you can see exactly the same implementation in Logic Pro. Sans called bus one. Bus one means you bring yellow bus, you put this sound on this bus and it goes to the school, to some other neighborhood. Then this yellow ch channel called aux one, which is yellow, right? It even says over here that input of this hanging in the air channel on my picture as you remember it's it was green channel in this dw it's yellow input of it bus one so basically yellow bus actually goes to this channel delivering the copy of this like to do do dish to do to do dish to do do dish to do to do dish so it will be copy then I put exactly the same plugin called RC48, which is lexicon imitation by native instrument slash soft tube. And then on this yellow channel, we only gonna have those echoes, you know, ambient sounds, which would sound like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you blend this blue channel, which originally to do do ti to do to do ti, and this yellow channel, which sounds like <laughs> you know what I mean? And together it sounds ambient. So as you can see, it's exactly the same implementation, like in Pro Tools, in Cubase, in FL Studio, in Ableton Live, and in all other DWs. Okay, let's come back to original sound. You can put it. To the left, to the right, to the middle. For this you use panorama. Uh, 
as I said, if you want to waste your time and being at the same level and by mistake thinking like all educational sources are exactly the same, you can waste your 10, 20 years. If you want to find absolutely complete gem, just get one class for free to decide how to contact me, the information is, in the first pin comment. And then you can control volumes with this fader. You can make it quieter or louder. Then all these channels, ambient effects, original instruments, they all come together to the master channel called Master Bus. In Cubase it's called Stereo Out on the right side of the screen, as you can see. So if I have, let's say, multiple instruments in this project, which means multiple tracks, which means they all go to multiple channels, which means all those multiple channels go to one master bus. So now we have three instruments, as you can see, as tr three tracks, as three channels in the mixer. As you can see, they all go to the master bus, which is red fader. Usually this is the point where people can process the whole song extra, or they can push, let's say, overall volume of the song. For this, people use processors like limiters and stuff like this. For example, on this print screen, you can see that I have this limiter on the master bus and this pink stereo out, which is master bus. We have this plugin called L2. This L2 plugin stays on the screen, as you can see, and it makes the whole song louder, for example. Now, as you can see, I put extra drums. We have kick drum, we have snare drum and conga. We have three drum tracks, sound like this. Right, so what if I want to create some sort of a group channel of all drums? For this, I select all three drum channels. I click right mouse click on one of those, and I choose command called add group channel to select the channels. In this case, now on the screen you have this blue fader, as you can see, so I can make the whole drum sound quieter, louder, so it's called group channel. So I combine multiple instruments to just one channel, basically. I can even process it, so I can put some processing in inserts of this group channel over here. Exactly the same I can do in Logic DW. As you can see, we had Audio 1, Audio 2, Audio 3. They all go to bus 2, bus 2, bus 2. Then I create so-called some one group channel. It's the moment where all these three audio tracks come together. And as you can see in the input of this new channel, it's called bus two. So basically bus two arrives. So all three instruments will go through this new channel called sound one. Let's talk about instrumental channels where you make music, right? You make music with stuff like this or with mouse cursors. If you're not really a pianist or finger drummer, you know, this MIDI keyboard sometimes not your favorite tools. Even though they all lie to you and promote DW controllers and stuff like this, in the most cases, the most effective tool is this one and this one. So what we do, we create new track, but instead of audio track, we choose add instrumental track. Then you have an option. You have three types of software. Synthesizers, which make their own sounds. You know, sounds like or or something like this. Or you may have some sampler, which plays pre-recorded, let's say, drum samples. Kick, snare, hi-hats. You know, stuff like this. And you have so-called virtual instruments where people record in studio string sections, acoustic pianos, and they create so-called sample libraries. For this, you use probably the most known program, Contact, Contact by Native Instruments. You select some library, let's say like this, and then you play notes. <laughs> 
you create a container for MIDI nodes. It's basically some sort of a guideline for these virtual instruments. Container, let's say like this. Inside, you put some nodes, some chords, and everything like this. You can imagine it like this. There is some MIDI nodes which basically trigger different pre-recorded audio samples. So this signal triggers different sounds from some library. So library makes those sounds. Eventually, signal actually goes to the aux bus hanging in the air, which allows you to put signal through it, process it in any way by inserts, and having fader to control overall volume. And the whole thing from the beginning to the end called instrumental channel or instrumental track. So basically, when I created in the first place by this command add instrumental track, this library with these MIDI nodes and in the mixer it has its own channel which looking like this having its own fader. In fact, it's exactly what I'm talking about, so you can see it on the screen. It's called Instrumental Channel. This is Logic Pro DW. You can see Instrumental Channel chosen on the top. You can see some MIDI, no some MIDI container with some MIDI nodes inside. Input says some synthesizer called Electronic Piano, and the whole channel looks like normal channel with a fader for volume control. If I double click on this MIDI container with notes, it opens up special editor allowing me to put those MIDI notes in place according to sort of a virtual piano keys. You know what I mean? Then I control some library or I can use this sampler which have different electronic music samples kick drum snare drum hi-hat kick sounds like kick snare sounds like tsh hi-hat sounds like tsh you know it's still the same midi notes which you can play at proper moment with different sounds for this you either can play actually real notes or you can play this drum pads on some MIDI controllers, so you play like doo -doo -doo -tsh, doo -doo -doo -tsh, like this, you know what I mean? Playing these pads. Instead of pre-recorded samples or special libraries, you can use actually synthesizers, which create sounds on their own, looking like this. I don't need to explain what synthesizer is for you, right? It's sounding like those artificial, digital, modern music sort of sounds. What other parts of DW you have? So don't forget, there is two main programs. Main sequencer or like tape machine. It's a, like where you have tracks. And vertical system called mixer or like water pipes. However, some pieces of the mixer can be available actually on the first pieces of the software. So where you have those like tracks, you still have some access to some pieces of the mixer on the left side of the screen. For example, stuff like volume. Let's put this slider to the left to minus four. If you open mixer right now, you can see this fader stays at level minus four. If you go back here and you put it plus two, you go back to mixer and you see exactly the same value, 2.57, right? The same you can see in Logic Pro. Even though we didn't open the mixer on the full screen, some channels of the mixer are actually available on the left side of the screen. For example, this virtual instrument track with some MIDI notes have actually some channel represented visually on the left side. We can see this synthesizer called DS Thorn. And we have this large fader. We can put actually even some audio processors over here and we can solo it, we can mute it and we can change left and right panorama. In these DAWs on the right side of the screen, you can have access to some libraries of so-called loops. I'm not a 
big fan of loops. I prefer to make my music by myself, playing guitar, keys, or actually even writing notes by mouse cursor inside of MIDI container. But some people kind of okay with using those loops, which somebody else wrote for you, and you can use those for music production. For example, on the right side, over here, you can choose some library of available sounds in Cubase. In Logic Pro, on the right side, you also can have some access to loops. Then, when you finalize your sounds and you want to convert your music to one audio file to upload it to some websites like Spotify or YouTube or whatever, or you want to convert some virtual instruments to audio tracks, actually, to push your computer less, it can be just simple audio waveform. For this, you need some menu called Bounce or Audio Mixdown. In Cubase, you go to File, Expert, Audio Mixdown, and you can choose the source where you take the sound, let's say from the master bus, from the whole song, you call it, you choose formats, you choose some settings, of course, in the context of this video, it's impossible to explain what you should choose over here. But anyway, this is the menu you would use. You have actually some faster way of doing the same thing, it's called render in place. You go to edit, you go to render in place, and you use one of these two commands. In Logic Pro, as you can see, you go to file, you go to expert, or bounce actually and eventually you go to menus like this where you choose again formats quality and other nuances another thing which is pretty important you need to have like major main settings of your DW in Cubase you go to studio you go to studio setup and you go to audio system or here you choose some for example driver which goes with your audio interface your audio card or the interface which you bought for working with audio. You usually have some software going with this piece of equipment. So you choose it here from the list, how quickly it will be working, and quality of processing like this. In Logic Pro, as you can see, you choose it over here in Settings Audio. Again, Buffer It's how quickly your uh, driver will be working. Uh, name of the driver and stuff like this. Also in your DW, when you create audio recordings or you convert virtual instruments to audio, you need to decide on quality of those audio files. In Cubase, you go to project, project setup, and you choose quality over here, sample rate and bit depth. In Logic Pro, you do it over here from main settings, recording tab, and again, you choose audio audio format, 32-bit with floating point, for example, right? Only in case, if you use something extra, like MIDI keyboard or DW controller with some fader like this, or something like this, you need to go to Studio, Studio Setup, and then you go to MIDI, MIDI port, press this plus, and you choose some type of equipment you use, in Logic Pro, you go to Logic Pro and you choose Control Surfaces Setup. And as you can see, I can choose over here Softube Console 1, uh, Launch Key uh, Keyboard, Launch Key Keyboard, like bigger one, Maki Control for SSL controllers and stuff like this. When you make a project, you need to save it, right? So you go to File, Save As, and you choose where exactly to place it, what folder will be for your project. The same you can do with in Logic, as you can see, from this menu. Again, file, save as. Okay, how about those inserts over here? What kind of processing you can get for your sound? It's most important, right? On my course, we never go like from like very simple level and then to advanced level, you know, I kind of combine everything together. Even if a student is complete beginner, I make sure people go from beginner level to advanced level anyway. At this point, of course, it's impossible to explain it at a very professional level, but simply speaking, you have equalizers. To make two things, you can either improve instruments, making them brighter, darker, less muddy, less boxy, more transparent, more detailed, or you can actually balance different instruments together by equalization. Dynamics you use either for taste, for coloration, or for dynamics control, where your instruments either sound more like clicky, bitey, more punchy, instead of your drums go like te 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 you know what I mean? 
or you control volume balance. When your vocals sound like stupid, like like loud, quiet, and with no reason, you really stabilize volumes of those notes. It's called compressor. Deesser, when your vocal make too, too much like tss, 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 sounds like this. Most microphones exager exaggerate C balances too much, and you need to stabilize amount of C balances in your vocals. So to control those like tss, 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 sounds, you use deessers. Limiters to put peaks under control, to put them at some specific level. But in most cases, commonly nowadays, people consider limiters as maximizers, which allow to make your music as loud as possible to competitive levels. Gates to make those like pieces in between notes less noisy. Reverb is ambience. I played a couple of reverb examples today in the video. Delay to make micro quiet echoes on the back of your instrument. Either just to make more like complex sound for your instrument or actually to create some sort of a substitute for your reverb. Instead of too roomy sound, you can make those like micro echoes on the back which would be some sort of a imitation of ambience. Saturation. Imagine you eat some food and it's not so tasty, you need a, a, maybe a bit salt, maybe you need a bit of pepper and stuff like this. So this like extra juice to your instruments, for different reasons you need it. Sometimes it's for just better tone, better taste. Sometimes it's just to notice your instrument better in the mix. Actually from the other side you can make everything sound too dirty by it. And panorama, to make sure your instruments and your song sounds wide, you can put some instruments on the left, on the right, but not only this. You can make overall stereo instruments like wider or narrower. Imagine something sounds wide and something sounds narrow at the same time. You create nice contrast. As I said, if you want to waste your time in being at the same level and by mistake thinking like all educational sources are exactly the same, you can waste your 10, 20 years. If you want to find absolutely complete gem and to get like real results within nine months of the course, I guarantee at least try one class for free. You're going to be completely blown away and you will understand how important this course can be for you. Just get one class for free to decide how to contact me. The information is in the description or in the first pin comment or on the screen.